Uh, we're going to uh, start the uh, board meeting of the SEVA Charter School, and I'd like to record that we have uh, the following board members present for a quorum. Mary Navas, Gershon Torres, and Larry Galabi, and Michael Jones. <clears throat> And from the staff, I see that we have uh, head of school, Josh Ripp, and director of operations, Daniel Ornelas. And then uh, when our guests introduce themselves, Kelsey. Hi, my name is Kelsey Sage. I am a middle school uh, history teacher at SABA. Welcome, thank you for coming. Of course, thank you for having me. And Matt? Matt, you're, you're muted. I'm muted, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm Matt Grist. Uh, I'm the ninth grade geography teacher, and um, I'm here to present the uh, teacher morale presentation. <laughs> thank you for being here. And Allison Sickler? Good evening, I'm Allison Sickler. I'm the 11th grade English teacher. I'm mostly here for just to listen and for moral support. Well, thank you for being here. And your cat. Okay. <laughs> oh yes, the cat. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that takes care of introduction of guests and our attendees. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? <clears throat> I'm moved. Second. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Bill. Hey. And uh, so taking a roll call vote. Uh, vote, how, Mary, do you approve? Do you vote to approve the agenda? Aye. And Larry, do you vote? Yes. And Gershom? Aye. And Michael votes yes as well. All right. We will move right ahead to. Uh, the public comment stage where it's an opportunity for somebody that wants to talk about something that is not on the agenda. So do we have anybody that would like to make any comments? Okay, not hearing any. We are now going to disappear into closed session and uh, we'll ask our guests to uh, be patient and uh, Josh, how are we going to let the guests know when uh, we're back from closed session? Um, well, Daniel's on, so he'll keep this session open, and I'll just send him a text once um, we join rejoin this Zoom session. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll close the uh, open session and move into closed session. Looks like we have a hand up. Oh, we do? Yeah, I just had a quick yeah. question. Um, do um, am I uh, allowed to share my screen for the presentation, or should I be sending it over to Daniel? Uh, I'll allow you to share your screen. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right. See you at closed session, Michael. I'll see you there. Oh, I have to leave first.
Welcome back. Okay, are we all here? Looks like we're missing like Marion Gershom. Ms. Gershom. Here's Javier. <clears throat> Are we waiting for Mary? Yeah. All right. Should I go ahead with the report? uh yeah that's fine because she she needs to be here for the votes but yeah okay the uh, board met in closed session and i have three reports to share uh the board by unanimous vote authorized save ahead of school josh rip with elizabeth sanborn falcone as agent to negotiate and potentially execute a purchase of 228 and 234 Locust Street. And that was by unanimous vote. Uh, then we went into two discipline cases. And the first report is the board approved the stipulated expulsion order regarding confidential student discipline matter order number 0201. 2022. In the second matter, the board approved the stipulated expulsion order regarding confidential student discipline matter order number 02022022. That was also by unanimous vote. So that concludes the reports out of closed session. Great, thank you. Yeah, it looks like we're still missing Mary. Oh, there's Mary. You're on mute, Mary. Uh, Mary, I just, I just had to run and check on something really quick. No problem. I just made the uh, reports from uh, closed session. So we have, now we will go to the next item on the agenda. And I appreciate the patience of the staff uh, waiting for us in closed session. Uh, the first report uh, has to do with staffing retention. And I believe, Matt, you're gonna be making that report. You're on mute. Yes, I am. Um, and I'm gonna, let's see, here we go. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. Let me oh, yeah. allow you to do so. Okay, go ahead. All right. Thank you, Daniel. And there we go. All right. Everybody see it okay? Yep. That's good. All right, cool. All right. Um, before we begin, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to what um, SABA uh, teacher leadership and collectively um, the, the SABA teaching staff have put together. Really means a lot to have you um, be here and to listen to what we um, have collected. So uh, this uh, survey was, com uh, was compiled uh, from um, the input of about 26 out of 35 teachers, so about 74% of the, um, the teaching staff at SABA uh, between the dates of January 28th and February 1st. Um, the survey itself consisted of 16 questions uh, with, uh, with the questions being set up on a linear scale from one to five, one being strongly disagree to five being strongly agree on a series of questions. 
uh, sorry, some noise outside. Um, um, the presentation that I'm going to be giving you right now will go over the highlights of the poll. Um, due to, um, I just wanted to make sure that I'm using your time as best as possible. We're not going to go over every question from the poll. Um, we are going to go over what uh, myself and teacher leadership saw as the most important questions uh, to address. Um, the uh, the results will then be followed by comments from staff sorted into general categories, um, school strengths, teacher admin relations, uh, teacher retention, and uh, steps to um, steps towards uh, a more successful uh, campus. Uh, so any questions before I get started? All right, I'm hearing or I'm seeing nods so okay um first up um first question was i feel successful as a teacher at saba um five being strongly agree one being uh, strongly disagree um so about um 40 percent of the those who polled would say they uh, mostly agree strongly agree uh, that they feel successful as a teacher at Sa uh, teacher at Seba, um, thirty four uh, about thirty four percent would say that they are neutral on that statement, while about four or about fifteen percent of the uh, teaching body would say that they are that they're feeling somewhat unsuccessful or very unsuccessful as teachers. Um, any questions? Um, okay. Let me, um, might be helpful. Uh, uh, sorry, I did have a question. Yes. So the question was, I feel successful. So how did, how was success defined? Just out of curiosity. Was it, um, or was it defined or not defined? Well, uh, the question that you see here is how um, what it was placed to the teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think if we were going to do a, uh, like if we were going to make a, a survey of teacher morale, like a, um, a, a, a semi, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the right words here. No worries. If we were to give uh, teacher surveys and get consistent feedback over the course of uh, semesters and years, um, that could be something that we could further build upon for that question. Because I'm just curious simply for the fact that each person may define success differently, like they could be feel successful in the classroom, but maybe not successful at managing their time as or their homework life balance. Um, and that affects them as a teacher. That's why I was just curious if there was any discussion around that. Um, that's a very, it was a great question, Mary. Um, and um, I think as we get to the comments, oh, um, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, one moment. Um, while we were in the process of creating this survey, we had initially uh, set it up to be question and then a comment uh, that was in the general area of, um, like generally related to that question. Uh, we restructured some of it so that we could go through the questions themselves and then have highlights from the comments um, at the end structured around those categories. So um, hopefully the comments uh, towards the end will provide a bit more detail. Okay, that sounds good. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Um, I feel safe on Saba campus. Um, uh, and I believe this question was developed uh, in response to some of the um, fighting uh, and um, generally more uh, like physical student interactions when we came back to in person. Um, overall, um, the forty six percent of the Seba teaching staff would say that they feel mostly safe at Seba. Uh, 19% uh, would say they feel very safe. Um, seven would say would be neutral on the topic. 
and two or about seven or eight percent would say that they feel somewhat unsafe uh, on campus. Um, I'm just going to leave the participants window open. I hope that's not blocking anything. Um, any comments or questions about that? Uh, the only uh, comment I have is you're not blocking anything. We can see everything. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm long day. <laughs> the question I'd have is sort of similar to the one Mary asked before is how you define safe. So is it basically safe uh, from any threats from students or safe from say any influences from the area around SABA? Mm. Or uh, was it basically just a, their sense of feeling safe, however they individually defined it? Yeah. Um, again, um, I feel like this question was developed, like I, I did not write this question myself, um, but I feel the, the spirit of the question is about safety on campus uh, when it comes to um, student interactions. Uh, um, if any of my fellow uh, staff would like to chime in about like the, the spirit of this question, um, that would be helpful as well. I think many of us took it more as a safety for not only ourselves, but for students as well of uh, response to COVID and then also response mm -hmm. to um, local community uh, instances of violence at other schools that have taken place within Santa Cruz County um, and how we feel that we have reacted as a school um, on Sabus campus. So it's that's really I think really where it comes from. Thank yeah, you. Are, you in ref are you referencing what happened at Aptos? Well, there's been Aptos, there's been other campus um, issues that have happened at, uh, I think Pajaro Middle was one. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's been ones in Salinas. Um, so I think that there's been some teacher concern around that. And I think SABA has, from what we see as the survey results has shown that we are a strong campus and that safety is not something that we are fearing for. <laughs> yeah, it's not a major concern. Okay. All right. Um, with this next question, uh, this next question was, uh, I feel that I can approach any member of SABA administration with questions or concerns. Uh, questions um, being um, a clarification on uh, administration um, directives, um, school-wide policy uh, uh, in regards to um, uh, discipline and behavior enforcement and um, expectations for um, uh, work like independent study um, notifications. Uh, with this report, um, I think it's kind of a bit more, um, uh, it's not as um, straightforward as the last one. Well, about uh, two teachers would say that they feel like they can talk to um, uh, admin about uh, their questions or concerns. 42% uh, um, would say they feel that they can approach them on most topics, uh, but the remainder were split between being neutral, not feeling uh, comfortable to, uh, not feeling very comfortable to approach uh, same administration with questions or concerns and um, uh, five saying that they feel that they can't approach um, SABA admin uh, about questions or concerns. I think uh, looking at this poll taken together, um, the numbers of teachers who are either neutral or have some concerns about approaching SABA members um, would be uh, about 50%. So it's, it's a pretty large number.
Um, you know, Matt, when I when I look at this and the the other two, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out the number three, right? What does who picks three and why are they picking that? Is it because they don't have an opinion that or not opinion, but they don't feel one way or the other? So therefore. Do we discount them because it's the highs and the lows? Does that make sense? Well, um, I think that's a good question. Speaking of from someone who did who did participate in this survey um, and did write neutral, uh, who did uh, put in neutral for um, some of these responses, I my perspective on that is that while I have seen while I have had uh, circumstances, and I, I don't remember off the top of my head if I voted uh, neutral on the on this particular question. Um, with voting neutral, I, I have found that there have been positive experiences working with admin, but I have also had a couple of experiences where either myself or I have seen or I have heard from other staff members where there was um, a confusing directive. Uh, there was uh, conflicting um, uh, responses to questions. Um, so the experiences that either I had directly experienced or I had heard from people I trust and I believe um, kind of canceled out what I had experienced myself. So I. While I had positive experiences, I, as a, not only as a, as an individual, but as a member of a greater staff community, I felt like things could have been better, but they were not as bad as they might be. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate because I like to do that sometimes. <laughs> so if I read the question and read it literally, it says, I feel that I can approach. So, and I'm again, I'm playing devil's advocate. If the, the question is worded that way, why would you, Matt, take somebody else's opinion into it when it's asking for your personal opinion? Does that make sense? And again, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I understand. Um, whenever it comes to decisions that not only are going to affect myself, like this survey, while I took it individually, was also um, taking a look at how all SAVA staff um, are thinking about this. I, I'm not an island. I live and work with other people. And their experiences, while not like my own, because we are all, you know, individuals with our own different experiences, uh, the people I've worked with over the past five years, um, the people that I have celebrated with, the people that I have struggled with, um, I take their views into consideration even when I'm thinking about my own um, thoughts and feelings because they matter to me. I hope that was a, a, a I hope that helped, I hope that was a, a a reasonable answer to your question. Yeah, no, I totally Perfect. understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, but from my perspective, if, if I'm part of the administration at SABA, I would look at this and say that half the staff doesn't think they can come and talk to us. I would say that that neutral number is really a negative because if, they're, if it's a neutral, that means they don't think they can come and talk to them. Or it could be exactly like Matt was saying, I've had pluses and minuses and they even out, right? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Larry and, and Mary uh, for, those, for those comments. Uh, were there any further questions or uh, were there any staff that wanted to add in on what's been said so far? I'd like to piggyback on what you were saying, um, Matt. Hi, mm -hmm. I'm a great English teacher, Allison. <laughs> um, because I think when you know we take into consideration how our colleagues are feeling or how they may have been um, spoken to, it, it affects the climate, I think, of the whole staff. So 
that may play a part in, in that answer. I agree. Um, okay. So next question. Um, I feel appreciated and supported by fellow SABA teachers. Um, again, this is, uh, unlike the, the previous question, I feel this is a pretty straightforward, uh, straightforward responses. Um, 10 out of the 26 respondents say that they feel very supported and appreciated by fellow SABA teachers. 14% uh, over 50% uh, of the respondents would say that they feel uh, fairly appreciated by their fellow teachers uh, with one saying neutral and one saying not so much. Um, um, and from, again, my own personal experience, um, while I have had positive interactions with admin um, as in my time at SABA and I have appreciated and have found support with them, I feel like the strongest support that I have had over the past five years has really been with my fellow teachers, uh, talking over lesson plans, um, workshopping approaches to um, uh, individual students that might be having academic or behavioral trouble. Um, those, all of those moments have really, for me, built a strong, for have made me feel like I have a strong camaraderie and connection with my fellow teachers. Any, uh, any comments or? Just to give a secondary perspective. Hi again, Kelsey, seventh and eighth grade social studies. Um, I, the next month will be my official eighth year of working, like com completing eight years at SABA um, and that the teaching staff has been the entire reason I have stayed every single year. I've had moments almost every single year where I've considered looking elsewhere, but the staff is really the thing that has kept me the happiest at SABA. And my fellow teachers that I've worked with have been incredible. I would also just like to mirror what Kelsey said. Um, I've had challenging years at SABA. My first year was really challenging, but this year has been perhaps the most challenging um, for a number of reasons. Some of are probably pretty obvious, um, but it is the relationships I've built with people like Kelsey, with people like Allie, with um, Diana and Athena, um, with everyone. It's, they, they are, they have been essential uh, to my continued being here. <laughs> I would say that uh, given what you all have been through over the last two years, uh, that the fact that that camaraderie is exemplified by the results is uh, really a wonderful thing. So yeah, that's nice to see. Yeah. Okay. Um... So uh, with this next question um, is in regards to responsibilities outside of teaching. And the examples for this question include uniform enforcement, tardy enforcement, uh, data reporting. Um, over the past few years, uh, uniform policy has changed um, and has become more flexible. Uh, and with tardy enforcement, that has been an issue, I think, um, and Kelsey, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that has been a bigger issue with high school rather than middle school. Um, but there are a lot of responsibilities that teachers have to take into consideration outside just planning and uh, presenting their lessons. Um, two out of the 26 respondents would say that they feel their responsibilities are very clear. Uh, five would say that they are mostly clear. Six what would be, um, um, kind of neutral on that. Um, perhaps they would say some things are clear, some things could be clarified a bit more. Uh, 10, uh, the largest voting block within this uh, question would say that they aren't that clear. Um, and then three uh, would say that they're not clear. Um, 
And Matt, just to chime in for the middle school perspective, um, this year we have seen a larger spike in middle school tardies. Um, it's, I think, brought up on a weekly basis in the seventh and the eighth grade um, grade level meetings each week amongst teacher staff um, okay. for those teachers. But historically, it hasn't been as big an issue as it has been this year? No, I think it's been a lot more glaring this year, and that's why it's something we've talked about with each other um, at, in those grade level meetings repeated, repeatedly. Yeah. For those who've been around for multiple years and have stayed, that we're the ones who've seen the difference, and that's we've spoken up about it. <laughs> yeah. So I think this question kind of reflects the times that we are in um, and also concerns with uh, changing um, responsibilities and expectations, not just the, these last couple of years, but throughout, um, throughout the time that uh, people have been employed here at SABA. Um, any questions? I don't get it. Uh, sorry, what was that? I think Miss Rainey is having a hard time with her audio. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and I think this is a follow up more general question uh, um, related to the last one we just went over. Uh, my responsibilities outside of teaching at SABA are reasonable and achievable. Um, one issue that's come up in the last year is having time to adequately record and uh, complete independent study notifications. And that's been a concern among uh, some teach about uh, among many teachers about making sure that there's dedicated time, uh, particularly on Mondays during PD and um, grade level and PLC times, um, that is carved out for us to a lot of work on these because, um, especially in the first semester and in January and the first half of last month, there were uh, really serious attendance issues due to Omicron. Um, and the amount of independent study paperwork that was uh, coming through for teachers to complete, and I can only speak for myself on this, uh, some unclear directions on how we were to fill those out properly um, uh, made what was essentially just like uh like what is what is an important part of our our of making sure that we are getting the funding that we need but also um can be considered kind of bureaucratic work or might be seen as such becoming kind of an overwhelming almost mountain of work for many teachers and Matt, just so you know i agree in the changes that they are making with independent study it made it hard for everybody to understand and do it. I mean, not just you, everybody. So yeah, yeah they made it also, extremely difficult. <laughs> I also wanna chime in and say that it's also work that can't be done at home outside of hours um, because it's something where you need to have a reliable printer and most families don't all have them at home with today's age. <laughs> yeah. Um, so independent study uh, notifications is one issue that I think was fueling some of the responses here with 40% of respondents saying things, things are not as good as they could be, um, and 36% not feeling either one way or the other. Um, um, independent study uh, was the thing that came to mind, but if there are any that um, I'm not thinking of, um, um, you can jog my memory. <laughs> um, 
But if there isn't any other further comments about this um, question, I think we can move on. Any other comments or concerns? I think maybe another thing that teachers had in mind uh, with this question would be um, data recording for things like tardiness, um, mm -hmm. confiscation of phones. It went back and forth a few times um, where initially the teacher was responsible for contacting parents for, for attendance issues and phone confiscation. And then it went back and forth a few times. And I think teachers were not quite sure where the dust settled on that. Um, and those are things that, you know, your average teacher is going to be very type A, very rule follower. And so when there's uncertainty there, that can breed a lot of, um, of, of poor feelings, <laughs> feelings and, of being unsuccessful. Yeah, frustration, confusion, exactly, yeah. To piggyback uh, off of Allison Sickler as well there, um, I was trying to think about how to word that. Yeah, I think it's more of the, uh, what I was thinking of a secondary example was the use of what to put into uh, educators handbook and how to properly use that and what responsibilities fall on us as educators and then what responsibilities were to fall on admin and it it has been a continuous discussion back and forth each uh, quarter and I think that's where some confusion may lie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so to break away from the linear scale, um, this is uh, when I was going over the results for uh, the survey, this is one of the questions that um, really hit me um, with I have contemplating I have contemplated resigning from SEVA before the end of the school year. And um, I believe it is like this school year, the 21-22 school year. Um, while 34% would say no, not ever, um, two thirds of the participants in the survey would say either no, but my thoughts have passed down that road before, if they've thought about it, or if they've considered it um, seriously. And I, to me, this is this is a hard pie chart to look at um, because I get a lot of strength from my fellow teachers and to and I try to support them as best as I can. Um, but knowing that 30% have really struggled this year is it's 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 a it's hard. It is a really hard one to look at and to think about. And I think something that just came to mind for me that I, we never discussed as a group before is also what's not included on here is those who did resign. Yeah. Um, I, I stepped in as a grade level lead for the ninth grade uh, during first semester while our grade level um, while our current grade level lead was uh, taking some time to um, recover. Um, but ninth grade lost um, their, the ELA teacher, uh, their special ed teacher, um, and the PE teacher, I believe all within the first quarter. And to have those kinds of repeated losses so quickly, um, it's hard for staff, and I am very thankful for the work that um, Mr. Winchell and um, and Mr. Mashuka um, and uh, Ms. Parsons have put in as as coming in, uh, kind of just like jumping right into the fray. I'm I'm so proud and impressed by their work, um, but to have and I believe I've got the right uh, number with just within ninth grade and they were not the only ones who left within the first semester. Um, it's hard as a teacher to see pe so many people leave so quickly and it's also truly hard on students and I think that's something that needs to be remembered when it comes to teachers leaving um, especially in the middle of the year. Um, it can make students 
uh, feel like it is, it is like, sorry, my words are not <laughs> working here. Um, they feel at fault. And they can also feel like what, like, yeah, it, yeah. So I, I think that this question reveals a lot. And it's a radical question because you're asking about leaving before the end of the school year. I think a secondary question, and you might have asked it, and it's not one of the ones you're featuring in this, but are you contemplating resigning from SEBA at the end of the school year? Because mm. that's a different set of data that yeah, there might be worse. Yeah. Um, that was not, I, I believe that was not a question that we placed on the survey. Um, and you're right, as a follow-up question, like knowing who might be feeling like I can make it through the end of the year, but then I'm done, um, that could also point to, that could also point to a lot of other implications as well. Thank you, Larry. Um, okay. And I think all right, we're on slide nine. Um, and then I think this is the last um, uh, of the poll questions that I wanted to share out with you. And then we're going to go into the comments. Um, thank you for your patience and your questions as well. Um, for this question, I believe there are actions SABA can take to help improve teacher retention. Overwhelmingly, uh, staff believe that there are there is uh, there are ways forward. There is progress to be made, and um, that SABA can um, can implement things that can improve uh, teacher retention. Um, I think this is a pretty straightforward response. Um, there is one outlier, um, but overwhelmingly, responses are saying yes. Um, there are ways that we can um, improve things. And we'll get to some of those suggestions at the last slide. Uh, any questions before we move on? Okay. I don't know. Can can you hear me? This is Ms. Rainey. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I just want to share that I just this is this is a really um, challenging presentation, but I, I want to celebrate Matt and everyone that's listening intensely. But I, I would like to say that there is potential. There is potential in SABA. 96% agree or strongly agree, agree to um, bonding and making synergy with um, admin and teachers. And I think that's what we're really asking for. So I would always, I'm always perspective of being optimistic, but I appreciate the fact that everyone's listening intensely. Yeah. It does matter. And Matt, thank you. Continue. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Rainey. I, I think I think you you brought up a point that was really important. I think improving teacher retention is um, this isn't just saying admin has to do this or the board needs to do this. This is something that it's going to take a village. And I think that mentality of building community has been one of SABA's guiding ideas. And I think um, working together as the board, as administration, and as teachers and as staff, I think we can make these things happen. Um, so now we're going to go into the comment category. Um, I tried to sort the comments as best as I could according to general um, topics and themes that came up um, while reviewing the results. Um, uh, and uh, for the first uh, response, my day-to-day -day support and encouragement uh, that helped me feel like a valued member of SABA always comes from my fellow teachers. Uh, SABA has incredible potential to be something truly remarkable. And I think this quote is really echoing what uh, Ms. Rainey was just saying. Um, and there we go. 
Uh, I think its teachers and counselors are a huge asset. I have never met a more dedicated, innovative, and reflective group of educators whose expertise should be tapped when, uh, when it comes to decision making regarding the school. So I think this is, I think this is a really, both are really positive statements, not just about, um, not just related to teachers, but I think also to the school as an idea and as a community. We work best when we work together. And um, I think we have some really strong people here. So that was school strength. Uh, the next one uh, was teacher admin uh, relations, how we work together, how we communicate uh, about um, uh, concerns and requests and how also admin has responded to certain uh, topics. Um, Respondent 25 said, I feel that there is a lack of consistency in the way that uh, the administration responds to my concerns and requests if I receive a response at all. I think I am most frustrated by the lack of transparency in many of the responses I receive. It is not often clear why a decision is being made or if teacher input is being considered. I've also noticed that information can differ depending on who you ask. Um, so one concern about uh, the relationship between teacher staff and admin staff is um, a need for greater transparency. Um, being clear when discussion is going to be open and seriously integrated into um, school-wide decisions. And when discussion isn't going to be open and providing um, a clear and consistent reasoning for why. Um, Respondent 17 said, SAPA admin seems to have successfully managed and reinforced positive behavior with regard to cell phone use and tardies. So for this person, um, while some of the poll responses have some mixed, uh, show some mixed feelings about how admin has, admin and teachers uh, have worked together to respond to um, certain behavioral issues, this person thinks things are going okay, and I wanted to highlight their views. I appreciate the ability to email assist at sabaprep.org. That's the email for um, um, concerns and potential emergencies uh, in classrooms to get immediate admin support uh, when there is a conflict with the student. However, sometimes there is no immediate reply and the conflict looms in the classroom setting. Um, this comment is kind of, is, is referring in, in part to how we communicate when something, when a teacher needs immediate assistance. And there has been kind of a back and forth between staff and admin about how to best approach this um, and how best to approach um, responding. Um, because I know not only as, as a teacher, I have, I, I, I would not say a hundred emails a day, but I have probably dozens to read and go over. And I'm sure admin are in the same, if not in a much larger boat. Um, so making sure that there is the ability to, um, and this teacher appreciates that there is work being done towards um, getting a uh, quick and effective assistance from admin, but there's been some inconsistency. Uh, have I missed anything? Would anyone wanna chime in or add anything or ask a question? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, um, teacher morale. And this is one of these comments is like the pie chart when I read it, um, when I was, uh, when I was going over this uh, presentation, it kind of hit me and hit me hard. Uh, respondent number nine. Um, I feel that my teaching at SABA is more or less worthless. Although I spend a great deal of time on lessons that I believe will be good, both fun and educational, learning opportunities for the students uh, um, 
learning opportunities for the students. In class, there is no interest by many of the students to learn anything. Um, and this was a quote taken from a larger comment. Um, from that larger comment, this teacher has had experience before with teaching and has put a lot of effort into their skills and takes pride in their work. And they are, they are struggling. Um, and I think that is mirrored in many ways with respondent number three. I understand that we are still working through a pandemic and everyone has a new stack of responsibilities, but positive and cooperative progress is not being made through admin's leadership. Many teachers feel lost, burnt out, and overwhelmed by the surmounting workload added this year. Um, I also want to make it clear, um, and I should have made this clear from the beginning, that we never intended to make this survey as a attack. Um, we're really just trying to put the words of teachers themselves out to you, not only the board, but to admin and to other teachers. And we're not trying to attack. We are just trying to make clear what people are feeling and create a dialogue so that we can work together. Uh, we can work together, we can build together to address the concerns that people have and help build a stronger foundation for the years to come. Um, I think, okay. I've got one more slide of comments, and uh, these are uh, these are going to be suggestions by teachers about some things that could be done to help improve things at SABA. Um, and some of them are already being addressed right now, which I'm so thankful and appreciative of. But before I do that, I just wanted to check in, see if there were any comments or uh, questions. So Matt, when there's a student, when there's a teacher that uh, expresses the idea of being a feeling worthless, um, what kind of support is available to a teacher that's having that struggle? Um, with that kind of, uh, for those teachers, um, I feel that. And again, I, I don't mean this in any, in any negative way. I'm just trying to express what I think might be happening with this person or with other people in this situation. And people can correct me if I am off base. Um, with this teacher, they have tried everything they can. They have um, reviewed their lessons. They have met with uh, students. They have uh, reached out to parents. They have asked for advice um, from admin. Um, they have checked in with other teachers and they have put in every effort that they can. And, this, and we are a supportive community as teachers. We like, I, I think the comments and the responses um, state that pretty clearly. Um, but I think the larger institutional supports that SABA offers or, um, or proposes um, is in danger of letting this teacher um, fall through the cracks, fall through the cracks where they have reached out to, um, they, they, have, they have tried everything. I hope that was a um, answered your question. Well, it uh, is concerning. It's uh, uh, obviously the person's in a very difficult place, and uh, we certainly want to make sure that uh, whatever we can do to support them and help them to uh, address the situation is there. So, um, but thank you for making us aware of this. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yes, so this is the last slide with commentary. 
These are um, suggestions provided by teachers in the survey about, um, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So um, these are some responses about teacher retention, um, some ideas, um, and then we'll follow it up with some more concrete examples. Uh, respondent eight, um, and this was a comment that when we were going over the survey in teacher leadership uh, with the teacher leadership representatives, um, respondent eight really hit us. Um, I believe teacher retention should not be dismissed as an artifact of the pandemic. I, I think this is such an insightful statement. This has been a concern for many years and it's a morale killer. I believe there are concrete steps school leadership can take to ensure more teachers stay at SEBA and to attract more experienced credentialed teachers to come to SEBA. But this is not that this is not uh, something that has been prioritized in a formal or visible way. So what this person is trying to say is that while retention is a huge issue this year and last year as well with a lot of people leaving at the end of um, uh, the 21 school year, um, Teacher retention has been a going concern among uh, at SEBA. Um, from my own experience, this is my fifth year teaching at SEBA, and of a cohort of, I think, six or seven, um, six or seven teachers and Paulina can uh, can double uh, can correct me if that's off. Um, Paulina and I are the only ones uh, from that cohort of five years ago, six or seven teachers um, out, out of seven teachers, five aren't here anymore uh, over the past five years. And we lost several teachers at the end of last year um, as well. And this year has also been difficult. Um, okay, thank you, Paulina. I appreciate um, the response. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so um, some other responses uh, to this question, uh, to in this category uh, for teacher retention, some, some uh, suggestions were also shorter workday. Um, I see this concern being heard by, uh, I see this concern being heard by the proposal of the no early release bell schedule. Um, and I hope this schedule is adopted. And I think that's, um, I think, I think that will come up again in the next slide. So that's something that is happening. Uh, respondent number 10, um, seriously integrate teacher input when offered and provide adequate explanations for why input will not be asked for. Um, it really helps streamline how teachers uh, respond to school-wide policies where when they know like, oh, okay, this is something that's up for debate, cool. Um, and I know my voice will be heard. Um, if it's not up for debate, then it's like, okay, this is serious and we need a clear path forward. Um, and I think Respondent 10 had a follow-up statement that I think was important, um, especially in regards to uh, respondents who, like um, in the last slide, um, uh, shoot, um, respondent nine, um, provide clear and straightforward steps for new and established teachers to take and use sick day leave if they need extended time to recover from COVID or some other physical or mental health concerns. Something that I am so grateful for in the last couple of years, and I wish it didn't have to take a worldwide pandemic uh, to make people more conscious of is the need that people have for addressing mental health. And um, I'm really glad that it is being more talked about and more conscious of in the workplace. Self-care has been repeatedly emphasized by the district and by admin. Um, but staff should not have to depend on individual conversations and relationships uh, in order to access the time and relief that they need. This is a difficult time. Um, and 
I think it's also important to acknowledge that teaching is rarely, if ever, easy. And the stress of the work is can be incredible. Um, and I'm glad that self-care and mental health are becoming more talked about. But I think SABA and many other um, organizations um, need to do a better job walking the walk. Uh, we're, we're talking about it and that's important, but we got to walk it too. Um, before we get on to immediate steps, uh, anything else that people would like to address from these responses? Okay. All right, uh, so this is the final comment category. Again, thank you for your patience and your listening um, uh, and, your, and your thoughtful listening, as Athena said. So for this comment category, I wanted to uh, point out um, specific recommendations that staff and teachers had made, not only uh, uh, recommendations on how things could be improved, but also where things really are improving because SABA is dynamic, things are changing, and we are excited to see these changes happening. So I am gonna have a couple of animations with these slides, with these um, comments. Uh, this green star is for things that are being put into effect right now. Uh, orange, it, orange arrows are for things that um, still need to be addressed, um, but can be and hopefully will be. So, um, oh, Matt, yeah. Matt, before you get started, this is just for Michael. So, Michael, if, if our board meeting goes past our scheduled time, do we have to vote on extending the time? I know with my other board meetings, we use that we usually do that, so, but I'm not sure if that is applicable to charters. Well, and beyond that, I've got people waiting for me that I was supposed to meet at six or seven thirty-five. So I'm not sure what we. We still do. have a full agenda, so I don't know if that we need to do that, Michael. But I'm just putting it out there. I'm not sure. What's uh, our our scheduled ending time? Seven thirty. Seven thirty, and it's seven twenty-six. So sh do we need to have a motion to extend the meeting? Uh, why don't we let Matt finish this presentation? I think this is your last slide, Matt. Yes, it is. Uh, and again, I, I, I thank you for your time and your patience, and I will go quickly through this. Uh, length of day uh, with the upcoming uh, uh, and, uh, schedule for next year, this is something that looks to be like, this is something that's really going to take place with the no early release bell schedule. Um, and uh, a lot of teachers seem to be uh, really uh, supportive and hopeful about this. Uh, pay schedule, uh, in the discussions about pay schedule and uh, especially with acknowledgement of cost of living uh, adjust, uh, adjustments um, being added, um, teachers are pretty positive about the pay schedule. So both of these things are concerns that uh, teachers have had about retention and they're being addressed. And we're really happy to see that. Um, Something that is more long-term uh, is teacher movement. Uh, there's too much uh, teacher movement. If each teacher had their own classroom, they would feel grounded and not scattered. Moving around classes leads to a feeling of impermanence that makes it easier for a teacher to think about leaving. Um, as someone who has moved, has has been a nomad teacher for quite for for some years, um, um, uh, having my own place as a teacher would be great. Um, but as I saw earlier in this board's agenda, you are, uh, it seems like there's some talk about uh, purchasing t uh, the property uh, across the street from us to do further development for the school. And I think teacher movement can start to be addressed uh, in that area as well. Um, Teacher admin relations. Uh, to retain teachers, uh, I believe we need a formal space to address pressing concerns. There needs to be uh, some formal way to express concerns about policies, procedures, and operations that are not working. And this is where teacher leadership is being transparent. Teacher leadership has not really been allowed to serve that purpose, and some have resigned as a result. People have resigned from teacher leadership, and there's been some frustration with how teacher leadership as an organization is being used and um, has and, and works within the school. Um, 
one of the survey questions was about um, feeling confident about talking to uh, teacher lead reps. Most staff feel pretty confident in that. What they are not feeling super confident about is are their reps being listened to? Um, but again, that is something that can and that can be changed. Uh, teacher retention um, and also that has a willing audience um, and a willing group of people that are more than willing to work with people. Uh, teacher retention, if you want to keep new teachers, uh, hazing of them, not by staff, but by students who are um, skeptical of teachers staying, uh, who are concerned about constantly seeing new faces, this needs to be addressed. Both preparing new teachers with the reality of it before the term begins and by addressing the student behavior. Um, as a first year teacher, I struggled with student behavior more so than I think than a normal uh, first year teacher would. And as I have stayed longer and longer at SEBA, I've built strong relationships with students. Behavior can still be an issue, but uh, I believe staying and being a present and um, consistent uh, fixture in their world really helps. Um, and those are some uh, potential solutions. Some of them are already well on the way to being done. And that is our presentation. And thank you so much for listening. So I, I have a request. Yes. And can you send us the, the complete set of results for the surveys and all of the comments? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, I'd really appreciate being able to see them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Anything well, thank else? I wanna, uh, Matt, I want to thank you for uh, all and the rest of the staff for all the time and energy that you put into putting this together. I don't think there's any topic uh, in, at SEVA or in any school these days uh, that's more important. Um, and I think you've given us a lot of very useful information that uh, we can uh, study and uh, try to find solutions. Um, well, so if it's, thank if you for that. If there's any solace, you, you, this is happening nationwide. I mean, the results of this survey that you guys ran with your staff is really consistent with the surveys that are going nationally. You know, teaching is in a really tough spot right now. It and is. So is administration. A it very is. high percentage of administrators are, are talking about leaving the profession as well, so. Yes, um, yeah, it is definitely a national issue and it isn't just isolated to teachers. Admin are struggling too. Um, and I would say that it is a national issue, but SABA is a very small community and we need to work on solutions here. Um, and I think the staff are ready and willing to work with all of everyone here uh, to make that happen. I think SABA is also a very special school with um, a lot of different um, policies and ways that we run our school that make it amazing for our students, but sometimes more stressful for educators. And I think that that's um, a part of also what needs to be addressed at SABA. That isn't, you know, nationally wise, but there are a lot of things that do, you know, resonate with what's going on in our country. And I appreciate um, you all for listening and Matt for leading this as well. And again, thank you for your patience. I tried to make this as succinct as possible, but there's, there's a lot of data and I will be, um, uh, sharing out that survey with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, as uh, it's been pointed out, we are over our uh, deadline. Uh, Josh, looking at the rest of the agenda, um, is there anything that absolutely has to be addressed tonight? Um, is there any problem with having some of these items held over to the next meeting? Consent agenda and then the... Um... Really, yeah, I hate I to all of the second, all the action items and the consent. We can skip the rest of the reports, but the action items we need to get passage of tonight. So I, I'm really sorry, but I have to go. Uh, I've got people waiting for me. They're just starting to get mad. Um, so you have a quorum without me, don't you? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I apologize again. I got to go. I'll see you next time. Take care, Larry. Thank you, Larry.
Hi, Larry. Uh, just for pro, pro forma, um, can I have a motion to continue the meeting to address the mandatory items that we have to address tonight as uh, Josh just uh, identified? Is there a motion to continue? So moved. Second? I'll second. Okay, um, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Gershom, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Javier, how do you vote? Aye. And Michael votes aye as well. So we have a quorum and we can continue. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda unless there is an item that needs to be pulled for further discussion? Um, I'm trying to remember, did I miss, I, I think that our last meeting, it was the January 18th <clears throat> agenda minutes, um, not the agenda, the minutes that I couldn't vote on. Is that, Daniel, does that sound familiar? And because of that, I can't vote on those minutes is what I'm saying. I know I missed one in last meeting. They couldn't approve it because I wasn't at there and you didn't have a quorum. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? So the question is whether you were at the 18th. January 18th meeting? Yeah, and I don't think I was. And I think that was, were they on the, the agenda for approval last at our last uh, meeting? They were, and yeah, I, we did. And they weren't that. approved because of the, the quorum piece. So yeah. I can't vote on them. So we don't have quorum for the. We don't meeting. have a quorum, so we're going to have to pull that off to the next yeah. meeting. You have to pull off the 18th one. Okay. We so just I'll, missed it because Larry I'll make left. For the 18th. <laughs> so I move right. approval of the consent agenda without the minutes from January 18th. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Gershom, how do you vote? Aye. Javier, how do you vote? Aye. And Michael votes aye as well. That takes care of the consent agenda minus the uh, minutes for uh, January, which we will try again next <laughs> meeting. Okay, going to action items. Uh, Josh, second interim budget? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so we have our second interim budget here. Paul's on the call from DMS to go through this with us. Uh, Paul, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening. I'll make this as quick as possible. So the, the summary analysis is there, but I'm going to go through all those numbers with you. So if we scroll down to the next one, which will be a summarized PL versus we'll have first interim year to date. Here we go. So in December, you approved the first interim budget, which was at an ADA of 499.69. Uh, net revenue at the end of the year was $411,000. Uh, the year-to-date actuals are through January 31. That's 58% of the year, seven months. And the third column is the proposed second interim budget. We're asking for your approval tonight. Revenues have dropped by 135,000. You'll see there's a drop in uh, ADA of 20. That is based on actual P1 attendance that has been filed. I was just looking at a school services report about drop in ADA across the board counties uh, charter schools districts districts are down nine percent across the state charters. Paul, if i may real quick uh that 479.25 um is not our p1 it's uh our projected it's our projected right. sorry P2. your projected uh p2 i apologize right so but it's still it's still down from where we thought we would be and uh we're seeing that across the board in 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 schools and counties um so but because of CARES Act and some other uh, one-time funding is there, it still helps prop up the revenues. Uh, the school is in very strong position as it is, right? You have $4.2 million beginning fund balance. The second interim budget, even with that drop, we've made some cuts in areas where we clearly weren't spending what we thought we would. We're looking at a uh, budgeted net surplus of $457,000. Uh, so if we can scroll down again to the next page. Oh, just really quick, Paul. So then yeah. your um, ADA rate is like at 93, 94% versus, uh, well, that's that's what it is right now at second interim. So um, that sounds pretty good. I mean, I know ours dropped to 92, which is the lowest it's ever been since I've been here, but it's usually around 95, 96. And yours is usually, SABIS is usually a little higher than that, isn't we're, it? Yeah, right. we're usually closer to 97. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, like 96.5 to 97. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next PL is really a more detailed version. If, if 
board members wanted to look at specifics. Uh, the only thing I would point out real quick here is you'll see a, a pickup in other state revenue. That is expanded learning uh, and in-person in, uh, grants that were awarded last year. Uh, some of it shifted to federal. So you, there's a, pick, a small pickup in federal, but they did not eliminate the state in-person and expanded learning grants. So um, I, had, I had left those out at the first interim mistakenly. Those grants are still there. So those they will be coming in. Um, if we go down further, you can just see more of the detail of where we made some specific changes. Uh, overall, staffing is relatively stable. I mean, uh, 21,000 and 16,000 change. Those are, are really immaterial when you look at a $3.1 million budget. If we go down some more, um, materials and supplies, we found a few areas that needed some, some increases and a few areas that needed some reductions. So nutrition yeah, is- Yep, go ahead, Paul. Okay, nutrition clearly is not, uh, was not coming in and anywhere near the 300,000. Uh, there's been a corresponding reduction in the nutrition revenue as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that um, one, um, I, I made that recommendation given that uh, at the beginning of the year, we weren't sure if we we're gonna do uh, the meal box kits for an mm -hmm. extended period of time. Um, when we did do those last year, we did spend a good amount of money that we, you know, ultimately we got back in revenues, but um, this year we really didn't move forward with doing the meal box kits. So this more more or less reflects a normal year for uh, for student meal purchases. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and most of these changes, I mean, these came at the recommendation of the school. It's their budget. It's their program. So um, I will point out maintenance and repair that additional sixty thousand given COVID and and some of the work that goes on and, and uh, work to to in to ensure that students have a safe and clean environment and so forth. Uh, the ESSER funds, the, the CARES Act money will certainly be picking that up. Um, there's a slight drop in depreciation after we reconciled fixed assets when the audit was completed. So depreciation has some savings of 87,000. And that, that's the big picture. So at the end of the day, we have a slight increase in the net surplus uh, projected at the end of the year, even given um, a drop in, in ADA. Uh, the last piece to show you, there is a multi-year and a cash flow. Um, the school has a very strong cash position. The columns shaded in blue <clears throat> are actuals. We ended January 31 with 3.4 million in the bank. That's 171 days of cash on hand. Um, forecasting out and assuming we're going to have some accruals at the end of the year, we should end the year somewhere around $4 million, um, 202, uh, 202 days of cash cash on hand. So um, uh, extremely strong position, plenty of reserves there. And finally, the last piece, there would be a three-year projection, the current year, 21-22, and then the two out years uh, per the school's direction. They felt 515 enrollment and 494 in ADA is, is where they would go. There are some just COLAs built in, and there is also a, a COLA built in on, on the salaries that I think will be discussed at some point. Uh, and beyond that, the next page would just show you the how we assumed the ADA and the enrollment in ADA over the next three years by grade level. Um, so I'd open the floor if there are any questions on specifics in the budget. The only comment I have, um, thanks Paul for, for your presentation. The only comment I have is, uh, that cash, that cash position that we had a page or two above um, looks great and it actually ties into one of the proposals we have here for the board today is um, establishing an operating um, uh, reserve. reserve. Yeah. So uh, I went with, uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but I went with the assumption of our normal operating expenditures being around 7.2 million. Um, so equating about 120 days, no, uh, 90 days of that three months worth is uh, 1.8 million. And that's the number that we propose. Last thing I'd like to add is uh, all assumptions are in line with what school services recommends, the gold standard for, for what districts, as well as the common message that comes out from the CDE. Um, so all the all the, the assumptions that are that are provided as guidance from reputable organizations that districts adhere to have been adhered to in this budget as well. 
So, but Paul, it, you're not you're not using uh, the governor's initial proposals then for the out years. It's what uh, came through at the June budget for the out years, correct? Yeah. I, so we didn't touch. There are actually four bills about uh, protecting dropping ADA. Mm -hmm. uh, some discussion of whether charters would be involved or not. We we just put all that aside at the recommendation of SSC. And until it's passed, I think it's it's not really worth putting in there. I agree. Um, and what you're seeing in, in the LCFF is really just colas. Uh, colas that came from Picmat in the calculator, mm -hmm. nothing more than that. Okay. Uh, there is one-time money in here, right? So the last thing I'll mention, one-time money, and it, it is significant, but that with it comes a lot of one-time costs. It, I can strip out the one-time money and in there CARES Act and in-person and expanded learning is 1.1 million. Of course, there are a lot of expenditures that go along with it. Uh, stripping those out when they're embedded in staffing in all different areas is a little harder to do. I don't want anyone to, to say, well, that would just totally flip the picture. Um, there is a lot of work that has gone on, maintenance, cleaning, uh, and positions and stipends that have been paid uh, to deal with expanded learning and all the other issues that came from the pandemic. So I just raised that. And the next two years, you still have additional CARES Act money that will pretty much equate to what we've been seeing so far. So the school will have uh, the next two years to settle in and work on their operating budget, what it would look like without CARES Act money. Uh, they still allocated a significant $1.4 million in ESSER three, which has not been touched yet. And they're allowed to use that through September, 2024. Um, so you, you factor that in and we, we have plenty of time. We have strong budget going forward. Um, and, and time to think about what that future five years from now might look like. So, yep. uh, Josh and Paul, um, there was that letter we got from the district uh, last month uh, regarding um, their cons concerns. Are we copacetic with that? Yeah, we addressed that with the district. Um, and then I know Daniel fall, uh, reached out to um, the county about the common message, and that information was incorporated into this. Uh, and uh, multi-year projection and the entire second interim. Yes. We also sure. double checked the multi-year, which was another issue they had in this multi-year. Does it, it is consistent with your program and, and what we've been doing, so. Thanks for bringing that Great. up, Nicole. Okay, any other questions regarding the second interim budget? Nope, it looks good. Can I have a motion to approve the second interim budget. So moved. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Gershom. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Gershom, how do you vote? Aye. Javier, how do you vote? Aye. Michael votes aye as well, passes unanimously. On to the SABA teacher salary schedule and work calendar for 22-23. So uh, to prepare for uh, each one of these salary schedules and work calendars, so teachers, counselors, admin, and support staff, uh, we uh, took a look at the financial forecasts, um, including what Paul provided, as well as COLA. COLA currently is set at 5.3% and um, uh, decided to put that 5.3% COLA to all of the teacher's steps and allow the step period increase. So teachers will receive both a $1,500, $500 to $1,500 increase, uh, depending on their year of experience, along with the COLA increase for the upcoming school year. Uh, in addition to that, they'll work under a 188-day calendar. And, um, oh, we've got, okay. Um, and then we have a list of stipends that we've, uh, uh, we would like to have the board approve as well. Uh, the stipends um, and the calendar and the schedule, um, we wrote about these in the blog. We um, had staff have an opportunity to provide feedback via a Google form, as well as make comments on a draft stipend uh, document. And some of those uh, suggestions and comments were incorporated into this final draft. Uh, hey. and the, okay, Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. So this this uh, salary increase, that's all in the second interim for the out years. It's already been projected in there, correct? Okay, double checking. Thank you. 
in the teacher presentation, there was talk about an early uh, release bell schedule. Um, is that uh, something that was discussed in these in the survey you're talking about? And is there does it have is it uh, involved in this what we're approving tonight? Tonight's the calendar itself. The bell schedule is not discussed in this. We talked about the bell schedule at the beginning of the semester, um, but I'm not asking the board to approve the upcoming bell schedule um, for the upcoming school year. And just to be super clear, uh, we currently have Monday releases, early releases at two o'clock, and there appears to be general consensus that we could do away with that early release, but then have a consistent end time be 20 minutes earlier. Um, and I don't know the top exact time off the top of my head, but 3 15. We have, oh, thank you. 3 15 in time each day, Monday through Friday. And so um, that's what we're uh, moving towards. But that's not oh, what for approval here. Right. So that'll be coming up in the future at some point. Correct. All right. So that's the SABA teacher salary schedule and work calendar. Um, we have two calendars, one for the new teacher and one for the returning teacher. So it's three additional days for the new teacher, right? That's I'm correct. That mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, teacher salary schedule and work calendar for 22-23? So, so moved. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Second. Thank you, Gershom. Uh, Mary? Aye. Gershom? Aye. Javier? Aye. Michael votes aye as well. She unanimous. Moving on to the SEVA counselor salary schedule and work calendar. Uh, so the SEVA uh, counselors also have a $1,500 $1, step increase along with a 5.3% pay increase at each one of those steps, um, along with a 203 workday calendar. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mary. Second? All second. Thank you, Javier. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Gershom? Aye. Javier? Aye. And Michael votes aye as well. Moving on to the SEBA administrator salary schedule and work calendar. Okay, the SEBA ad admin salary schedule also has a 5.3% increase. Um, to each of their steps and a $1,500 step increase. So it's consistent across all three of the schedules we've discussed so far. Um, and then the workday calendar for admin is at 234 days. All right, motion to approve. So moved. Second. I'll second. Thanks, Javier. Mary? Aye. Gershom? Aye. Javier? Aye. Michael votes aye as well. Passes unanimously. And on to the support staff. The support staff schedule uh, also had a its uh, hourly rates, but they received an appropriate rate increase depending on where they're at in the hourly rates. It's listed there in the draft schedule, um, along with a uh, workday calendar of 230 days. Uh, the major change we made was there's a few weeks during the school year um, in which they were not expected to be here and were not paid, and we allowed them to have paid days off during those select weeks there. Um, so that's and that's indicated in these workday calendars right. for support staff. Great. Motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Mary. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Gershom. Um, Aye. Mary, what's that? Aye. <laughs> Gershom's on it. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael votes aye as well. Javier, did you vote? Aye. Yeah. That's, I thought that's I heard flurry him. Of votes. <laughs> that's unanimous. All right. That takes care of the uh, schedule, salary schedules and work calendars. On to the SABA 90 day cash reserve policy. I believe well, Daniel this, was just talking about that. This was one of the metrics that we were measuring our financial organizational goal um, in which we wanted to come up with a reserve policy. And now we finally have it here. 
Uh, basically, what this states is that um, SABA will be obligated to maintain a $1.8 million reserve, 20, approximately 25% of the annual operating budget of $7.3 million, or three months of av uh, a average expenses. Um, so uh, I would like the SABA Board of Directors to approve this reserve policy um, and to have this in place to always make sure that we are in a stable financial position. So um, do you guys have a fund 17 that you keep for economic reserves? And is this a different fund or you're just gonna separate it out and monitor it? How does that work? Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, so we don't, we don't use all the funds that, that the state and the districts use. Okay. Our system would allow us to. Okay. But what we're gonna do is put it under the net asset section, just okay. separating out of the 4.2 million fund balance as a uh, board of restricted. reserve, restricted. Okay. And then, and then the remaining. Okay, sounds good. And just to understand it, because it's a policy that's going to be a yearly thing, and it will not need an approval from the board anymore. It's going to be like every year it happens automatically, type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, the only board action that would be needed would be if we were to tap into, into that reserve. Yeah. You would have to get uh, board approval for that, right? Correct. So you know, if there's a silver lining to COVID, it's all this extra money we ended up with. Um, so functionally looking forward, if we refer, we, if we return to the way the, the bad old days, um, what is the process for, you know, having to sort of reel back this uh, reserve idea? I, I think I think that would have to come with um, a, a different expectation in terms of what the uh, net operating uh, expenditures are. So if it were the case that our net operating expenditures were drastically lower than 7.2 million, then we'd have to re we'd have to look at, again at what what a realistic reserve number is and just update the policy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would be an example of why we would dip into the reserve let's say that we had a ada increase or like you know we do lots of different programs and pay lots of different teachers and different staff positions and let's say we had an ada increase and then we're looking all right we're trying to we need we know we need to have say 30 teachers that's unquestionable so but in doing that and paying for that staff along with the support staff and admin necessary just to operate the building our expenses lead to us dipping below that three-month reserve you know, on occasion during the school year, we'd say, hey, can we move those to two months? Yeah, I would say, especially at the very beginning of the school year, when, you know, a lot of a lot of what we do is front loaded in terms mm -hmm. of uh, expenditures. And then you factor in the states a little bit um, at times uh, behind. It lags behind in terms of getting us revenues. So it, it would probably be around those times that I imagine we'd have to tap into that reserve. I still remember a day where uh, our cash balance was around 90,000. I remember uh, that like three or four yeah. years ago. It was. I remember that. Good. Yeah. So yeah. I, if I recall, back in those days, we would go and get a uh, line credit, line. credit loan, right. right? Yeah. So this right. this helps us avoid having to do that. Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. I would also right. say we have some ambitious goals for the school, and to finance those goals, we're going to be looking at least partially at SEBA, and this will make us be make us. Uh, it's there for you mm -hmm. and not maybe going too aggressively at the general funds to say finance a gym or whatever else we want to do right. yeah and, and part of the policy states that if we were to tap into it uh for any reason that would probably lead to a, a longer payoff period it, it gives it gives us three years from which to to up to three years to pay that back towards this balance so um, there's some flexibility it's a good thing mm-hmm Okay, is there a motion to approve our 90 day cash reserve policy? I move. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Help me you got me at I'll approve. And Gerson. I'll take it. Great. Mary? Uh, aye. Gerson? Aye. Javier? Aye. Michael votes aye as well. Passes unanimous. On to the COVID safety resolution. Okay, so uh, this is one Michael had mentioned that it was important that we continue to follow the CDC and CDPH and Cal OSHA. 
and Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency in all of our COVID protocols. Um, and so uh, this is a resolution to uh, state that SABLE will continue to follow those protocols to ensure the safety of our students. Yeah, I, I was talking with Josh earlier about the, the current situation we're in where the governor has now announced they're we're going to go off of the masking in schools on uh, March 11th. And uh, as we all know, masks and all the things having to do with COVID have turned into such a polarizing uh, political issue. And I thought it was important that we as, a, as an institution, as a public institution, always base our uh, decisions about how we're going to proceed based on the best available science and based on the leaders that uh, we have at the, Cal at the uh, County Office of Education, the CDC, and other uh, appropriate uh, health organizations uh, and not bend or sway according to um, political whims and pressures for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so with that safety resolution, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? I'll second. Uh, Mary? Aye. Kershaw? Aye. Javier? Aye. Michael votes aye as well. Motion passes. Uh, and it's eight o'clock. Ding, uh, ding, ding. Closing <laughs> items, anything else? Anybody, anything anybody wants to stick on the uh, next, agenda, uh, next agenda for the next board meeting? I have bell schedule and the January minutes. Yes. Is there yeah. anything else? Uh, well, I wanted to present, we have one Oracle that I've been presented on and that's governance. So I'll just put okay. that, that was on my report for today, but we shall put it. that in. Okay. Okay. Thank you everybody for uh, your uh, sticking around for this um, and getting this all, all this work done. Uh, but I thought it was really important that we listen uh, attentively to uh, the presentation of the teachers. And um, so I think it was time well spent, but I understand that it is quite an imposition on us. So uh, thank you again for doing that. If it could have been a little more concise, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so I uh, hereby adjourn the meeting. Okay. Take care you guys. Everyone. Thank you everybody. Bye.